the return of the top 20 lists on the Robes 08 channel. Are you ready? What's going on YouTube fragrance family? Welcome to my top 20. Yes, I didn't stutter. Top 20 designer fall list for 2018. All my niche heads that's watching this, I'm coming for you. The niche list is being composed. So fall, um, they say fall is supposed to fall in between the months of September to December. Well, should have told Canadians that because really for fall for us, again, it can extend to December, but really September, October-ish. You know, once Halloween hits, uh, October 31st, usually we got snow on the ground. Sometimes it stays, sometimes it doesn't. So first and foremost to all my OG original subscribers that are watching this, welcome to the return of the top 20 list. I know a lot of you wanted that. It just didn't feel the same doing top 10. I'm leaving out some gems. So hashtag back to OG form. Let's go. So when, when watching a fragrance review on their top seasonal list, there's always things in the background in my head that I'm like, you know what? You know, seasonal list, uh, it all depends on where you're located, right? A fragrance reviewer that's located in Las Vegas, let's say, mentioning their top scents for winter or fall, and I'm just looking at them like, I wouldn't wear that during my winter in Canada. I live in Canada. I live in an igloo. Yeah, I take a snowmobile to work. I work for Santa and my best friend's a penguin. You get it now? <laughs> so it's different for the region. It's good to know your fragrance reviewer. Maybe a lot of you don't think of that. You're just like, oh, you know what? That makes sense. Mark has some really dark stuff for fall. Like I'd wear that for winter or I wouldn't wear it at all where I live. So think about that. I know seasonal things is it's subjective, right? Some people are just like, forget seasonal. I wear what I want when I want. You're the man. <laughs> I'm looking at you. Kudos. But with a with a uh, large collection like I do, I can be picky. Uh, and, and I can wear stuff that's out of season, right? If I want to wear a citrus, damn it, I'm going to wear a citrus during the winter. I, I don't care. But seasonal lists, these are more tailored for that season. So I can do that. I have that... Um, I have that available to me. So let's take a look at the backdrop of fall of what I think in, in this in this head right here. What is fall to me? Well, the temperature here in, in Canada where I live is approximately three to 13 degrees Celsius to all my American friends. That's like 36 or to, to 50 Fahrenheit, give or take as far. So it's starting to get cold. Um, it can go below zero. Um, here in Canada, depending on which month you're talking about. Um, you get some rain, you get lots of wind because those leaves, they gotta go. <laughs> and you're gonna see some pictures that we got a lot of leaves. Um, the cooler weather starts introducing itself. You may get snow, it may not stay on the ground or it might. Um, so as far as clothes go, what am I wearing? Well, I'm wearing stuff like this, right? I'm wearing long sleeve shirts now. Shorts, they're out, unless you're crazy. Uh, we do have some Canadians that wear shorts during the winter. Uh, pants are in, raincoats, uh, they get introduced. Hoodies are more common, so I'm wearing a hoodie instead of just a t-shirt outside. Um, sometimes you can wear a t-shirt and jeans, uh, so the shorts are out, but then you gotta start introducing the hoodie. So hoodie and jeans, and then you start wearing a coat with a t-shirt or something like that. Uh, boots start being worn because you're getting a little more rain. You're getting a little bit of snow. I think that background is, is very important to, to look at these lists, especially if you're taking them fairly seriously, um, to see where your fragrance reviewer is from and, and what they're wearing and what the temperature is around them. So now let's get into the reasons for my list. Um, because that's another thing. Is it wearings or is it just suggestions or do you have restrictions? Am I pushing the latest stuff, right? Um, you're going to see different reviewers and, and I can see it because I've been in the game for long enough that I can see, hey, your list is all full of 2018 releases. In 2017, your list was full of 2017 releases. What are you doing? Um, so you can tell. Um, but if you're new to this, you may not know. Oh, he's pushing the stuff. That's all at Sephora. Yeah. Okay. So how do I choose my list? Well, right now I'm, I'm late. So it's going to be a, a culmination of what? Well, what I'm wearing. Um, you know, I'm doing a top 20 here. So if you're, you're doing the math here, three, 
three months, top 20. What is he wearing these once or twice and then makes a top 20 list? Yeah, pretty much. Um, and that's at the most, right? Um, so wearings, personal. Um, second of all, I look at suggestions, my personal tastes. So what I suggest to my viewers. Uh, you guys are here to watch me, so I'm assuming um, you do like some of my taste. Third, new releases to me. It's no joke that I am going to ha utilize or I'll have more attention to fragrances that I just purchased for this upcoming season. Um, if I'm reviewing them and stuff like that. So they're going to get a little more wearings there. So you're going to see a little bit of new releases. I don't like to pepper my whole list with new releases. It just doesn't seem right to me. And four, I have no restrictions. This is not going to be all 2018 releases. I don't know if maybe I might have one or two in here. There is going to be some discontinued sets, right? It's my list. Um, there are going to be sets from the 90s too. Um, I'm not selling stuff to you. This is my list, personal list that I think are, are best for this season. So now that you know why I'm choosing my list, let's take a look at the best fragrance groups to choose from. Orientals, woods. Um, spices are what I'm looking for for fall. I move away from the citruses, the aquatics, the aromatics. Um, the best type of words to look out for when looking at fragrance reviewers. Warmth, comfort, dark, syrupy, gourmand, foodie, woody, resinous, uh, among other uh, type of words that I'm looking at. Best notes for this type of season. We got vanilla, cedarwood, oud, sandalwood, cinnamon, cardamom, pine, leather, tobacco, tonka bean, um, so those are a mixture of notes that I'm looking for for fall. Something a little more comfort. Um, I won't go for the darkest of the dark. Sometimes I do. You're going to see a little mishmash of some dark, 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 dark scents. But then you got some tweeners here that can be for fall, spring nights type of thing. Uh, daily wear scents, of course, with some uh, darker uh, nighttime scents. The notes that are mo most prominent in my top 20 right now. Cardamom, very popular these days. So there's a lot of fragrances that have been released in the past five years on my list. So you're gonna see a lot of cardamom in them. It's a, it's a great note. Um, leather, it's huge right now. Oud, I just love it. Um, I don't care if I'm out of touch as far as what's, what's hip right now. I love oud and I love amber. Um, so those are the heavy notes, vanilla too, um, that are going to be in my top 20. So now that you have a grasp of why I choose what I choose and the season, Let's take a look at what I chose. At number 20, uh, we have one from the House of Armani. Um, this fragrance is one that uh, is basically one that's more mainstream on my list. And this is a 2017 release called Stronger With You. It is new to this list at number 20. Uh, the best season for it, I think, is this fall. Big notes, we got vanilla, cardamom, and chestnut, which is utilized in By the Fireplace by Margiela and uh, that Fragrance is in this list too. Um, this is both a daytime and a nighttime scent for me in the fall. Casual use, more than dressed up. Nothing crazy here. It is your sweet designer scent, circa of last year's type of list. Armani Code Profumo, One Million Privé, Ultra Mall. I like these kind of scents as they have some interesting part. They utilize, this one right here utilizes the note of chestnut, just like by the fireplace which gives this scent some uniqueness and some interesting tones. It has solid longevity and projection, just a plain solid designer sweet scent in the game. At number 19, are we something a little more left field here? This is the complete opposite of Stronger With You. It is from the house of Vince Camuto. Ah, we say bon ça. And this one, number 19, Smoked Oud. Beautiful, beautiful bottle. Uh, best season for this, I think, is fall and winter. Big notes, we got leather, amber, saffron. More of a nighttime scent for me. Casual wear, um, complete opposite of Stronger With You. This is total left feel for anything designer. Highly balsamic as a scent. Almost a jammy rose note, dark, interesting. It has a highly balsamic olive-like note with some red hot spice. It's very daring for a designer scent and very well composed. Also new to the list. At number 18, from the House of Davidoff, was number one on this list eons ago in 2015. Still a great scent. That's why it's number 18 on this list. And that is Leather Blend. I love this blend line, by the way, from Davidoff. 2014 release. Best season for it is right now in the fall. I mean, utilizes rose, oud, juniper. More of a nighttime scent. Um, but I can wear it during the day too. Uh, more of a casual dressed up. This is a very versatile scent for fall, by the way, because it has um, some transparency to the scent. It's not super dark. It has been in previous lists. Um, when I first 
smelt this fragrance. I couldn't believe my nose when I first smelt it. I was like, what the hell? This is the best thing since cool water. <laughs> David, where have you been? Um, they truly needed a release like this. They knocked it out of the park. Beautiful suede-like brown leather note. Very smooth, very well balanced from the house. This blend line, don't sleep on it. Amber blend is actually starting to be one of my favorites from the blend line. At number 17, also not a stranger, also a number one back in the day in 2016. This was my number one. Didn't make it last year, did make it this year. Ah, beautiful tiramisu note here. Womo by Salvatore Ferragamo, 2016 release, best season for fall. Tonka bean, cardamom, tiramisu, nighttime type of scent, casual wear type of scent. Again, was number one, fell off the face of the earth last year in my list. It kind of reminds me of Stronger With You as far as popularity goes. Not in composition, but I would see the same person wearing Stronger With You would wear this. They're built for the same type of scenario. Uh, Womo is sweet, but also has more of a gourmandish taste than Stronger With You with that uh, dessert-like tiramisu. A beautiful, beautiful scent from Ferragamo. Talking about versatility at number 16 from the House of Dolce Cabana, the one Royal Knight. I think this is my favorite from the brand. Beautiful, beautiful 2015 release made for fall. Amber, cardamom, sandalwood, big notes in this fragrance. This is night or day wear scent. Um, it has some transparency too, but also has some darkness. I could see this wearing this casually, dressed up. Um, it's no stranger to this list. Made it uh, last year at number seven. And of course in 2016 at number eight. Personally, I think is the best from the one lineup. Has that beautiful cardamom with a good amount of wood, some sweetness from the amber. Light enough for a cool fall day, great for a rainy day, to a darker night. Very versatile in the fall. The one Royal Knight at Numero Size. Numero Canes, let's take a look at it from the house of Tom Ford. Tom Ford kicked ass in this list. Um, this is one of them. This one right here. Discontinued, new to the list. At number 15, Sahara Noir. Found in the woman's aisle, but oh, oh she's, she's a little manly. She's got some push to her. 2013 release, best season for this winter because she pushes, she's dark, she's big and bold. Uh, big notes in this fragrance, incense, amber, labdanum, more of a nighttime scent for fall. I can wear this casually and also dressed up. I can wear this with jeans or a suit, doesn't matter. Um, new to the list, of course. This is by far the strongest scent out of the list currently. It will blow the walls off and usually more of a winter scent for me. But since it's new to my collection, I just got it this summer. I couldn't wear it, I had to wear it. Balsamic, um, it's smoked out. Um, it's got so much more depth than anything in this list right now. It's got some ambery tones. It's got that dark incense, the smoke in the woods. One of the best from the house of Tom Ford. Sadly, discontinued. But hey, if you're a sniper on eBay like I do, keep, keep, keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> hey, another one that's been number one on this list Two years in a row in 2013 and 14, made it on several lists, top 10. Um, this thing is made for fall from the House of Versace. I think the best Purim, and this is Oud Noir, the black and gold bottle, beautiful bottle by the way, 2013 release. It, this thing is made for fall, it doesn't have too much push to it, so I like it more for fall than winter. Big notes in this one, Oud Leather Spices, um, day or nighttime scent. Um, I like to wear this sometimes at work just because it has some transparency to the fragrance. I can dress it up and I can dress it down. Previous list, forget about it. It has been a mainstay for me. A fragrance that has some personality to it, but much lighter on the skin than most on this list. This makes it perfect for me that likes something a little darker, a little more interesting during the day, or something a little lighter during the nighttime and fall. It still has that kick and has like leather blend from Davidoff. This is another release that I felt was unique, well composed from a brand that was actually kind of in a rut. Dry, woody, well composed scent. What's not to like? Versace, Purim, Oud Noir, Numero 14. Numero 3 at number 13. We have Hugo Boss. Hey, Hugo, Boss Bottle used to be <laughs> a staple in this list. Oh man, when the, that thing was a signature scent, it just killed it in the fall. <laughs> this one right here. Boss Bottled Oud, great, great release. 2015 release from the house of Hugo Boss. Made for fall, Oud, Apple, Santa Water, big notes in this one. More of a daytime scent for me. I can wear it at night also during the fall than more of a daytime during winter. Casual, dressed up, doesn't matter. It made this list in 2016 at number five. I'm a huge advocate of the, the, the original Boss Bottled. It's the only Boss I wear 
consistently, to be quite honest with everybody. Some of Flankers have been solid, but this one, I feel surpassed the originator. And uh, anybody that grew out of Boss Bottled that have like a stronger palette like I do, this one's right up your alley. It utilizes that standard apple from the original, but the darker tones amplifies the apple to make it even better, juicier. Um, I don't know why, but very surprised that Boss made such a great composition here. The oud in here, okay, designer-ish, but very well done. Now we have some back-to-back -back Lalique action. I love Lalique, Encre Noir series, huge fan. At number 12, this is a flanker of the original, Encre Noir. I'm still loving wearing this one, Encre Noir à l'extrême, a 2016 flanker release, best for fall, beautiful cypress vetiver and incense in this one. More of a nighttime scent for me, more of a casual wear type scent. Um, it has made this list previously top 10 all day, every day. The vetiver and the cypress are front and center. What I would actually expect from an Encre Noir flanker does a good job as per usual. It has some added darkness with that incense. It's hidden behind the greenness, gives this scent more of a darker, smokier appeal. Beautiful, beautiful scent. It doesn't have as much push as the original. Don't matter, I can wear the original in the winter. At number 11, a new one on this list from the House of Lalique, Ombre Noir. Now this is a 2017 release, new to me, more of a fall type scent uh, for me. Uh, big notes in this, myrrh, tobacco, cognac, nighttime scent. Casual or dressed up, I can wear this one casual or dressed up in here. Um, obviously new to me, so it hasn't made a list in the past. Um, the newest Lalique doesn't disappoint. It's exactly what a fanboy of the darker Laliques. If you're a fanboy of Encre Noir, just because of the composition, don't forget about Vetiver and all that, just the composition itself. You're like, oh, this is really well done for a brand that's selling it for 30, 40 bucks. They did a good job as usual. It has some added uh, beautiful darkness to the fragrance. It's spicy, it's warm, um, it has some sweetness and it has some balsamic quality. So it's a little sweeter, a little more, I would say a little more mainstream than the Encre Noir series. So maybe more palettes would actually like this one than the Encre Noir. Hey, at number 10, we got another old school number one on my list. Um, this is from the house of Jean-Paul Gaultier. I usually don't, uh, you know, go without a La Malle in my list. And there it is. La Malle Essence de Parfum 2016 release. Great for fall. Big notes in this fragrance. Leather, cardamom, vanilla. Best for day wear. I love this one in the day wear. Um, casual and dressed up. Previous list, of course, last year was my number one. So we got a new number one this year. Don't worry about it. At number 10, it's still solid. This replaced my La Malle wearings in the past few years in the fall. Continues to do so. Great addition with some leather, some cardamom, amped up. Just a fanboy of this lineup. Great release from the brand at number 10. Le Mal Essence de Parfum numero 9. Talking about staples, boom, the stars are here to shine. Um, obviously, Muglier, you gotta have at least one, at least two, maybe five in your list. I wouldn't hate. Beautiful, beautiful scent. Pure Malt, uh, of course, number nine here. Um, I'm not even gonna go through the resume on how great this fragrance has been. Um, this has made my list since, what, 2010? Steadily? <laughs> it's telling you how great this fragrance is. And I, I think it didn't make my 2009 um, fall list. That was my very first top 10 list, by the way, in 2009, because I didn't buy it at that time. So this is the only reason it didn't make it. So best season for this fall, uh, of course, the fruity notes, the vanilla, the malt in this one, beautiful. Uh, night and day use for me. Um, dressed up or casual, more a casual wear type scent. This is more of a jeans and t-shirt, something like I'm wearing right now. This is great for it. I'm not gonna take a look at the resume because it's huge. Um, steadily has been on this list over the years from number one to all over the board, but always around. Arguably one of the best flankers in the designer game, bar none. When the cool weather arrives, the Muglier brand gets dusted off, goes heavy into the rotation. They work so well in the cooler months, and this one is one of my favorites at number nine. At number eight, we have the House of Issey Miyake. And you're like, Issey Miyake, fall list? What the? This ain't summer. Yeah, I know. But this one, new to the list. <laughs> I just talked about this on my channel. L'Odyssee Pura Noir Ombre. 2016 release, great for fall. I think it's meant for fall. Uh, big notes in this one, amber, vanilla. 
nighttime scent. This thing has a lot of push. Uh, casual use. A dark Issey Miyake. They hit the nail right on the head with this one. Very high raking for a scent that just came into my collection just now. But an amazing warm ambery scent from the house of Issey Miyake. Now this one right here that I'm going to show you guys has been top five dead or alive since it's been introduced from the house of Gucci. This is a brand that Finally, he's resurrecting. I don't know what's going on in Gucci. They're drinking some great Kool-Aid over there because they're releasing some good scents recently. Mm, this one, Gucci Intense Oud. I love, love this one. 2016 release, best for fall. Uh, big notes in this one, Incense Oud and Leather. More of a nighttime scent, more of a casual wear scent. Previous uh, last year was number two on this list, so it was number seven today. This is where Gucci decided to take men's fragrances seriously again. I think this is when that started. After all those Gucci guilty flops, or top sellers, I call them flops. <laughs> After this release, they have just been on fire with their releases. This one is Dark Comfort and Great Oud release from a designer brand. Now this one new to the list, always nice to see a new to the list this high. Be beautiful, beautiful scent from the house. Uh, this is a new house to any of my list. This is a new fragrance to me from the Maison Margiela lineup, from the Replica lineup. This is By the Fireplace, 2016 release, great for fall. Uh, vanilla, chestnut, peru balsam in here. Uh, we got night and day wear for this one. I've been wearing a lot of it actually during the day. Um, more of a casual wear type scent. This is the one I gravitated to when I first heard of the brand and for good reason. This one is simply beautiful. New to my collection. I love that chestnut note in here with that vanilla sweetness. Easy to wear and can be just close your eyes and forget about it. You can wear this at any time during the fall. Also new to this list, from the house of Armani. This is a lineup of Armani that I've ignored and our community on YouTube have ignored this line. And this is a beautiful line and this is Armani Eau de Nuit Oud. 2016 release, also fall is the best season for it. Big notes, rose oud and saffron. Now it is not your typical rose oud saffron scent. Um, trust me, uh, very well done, great for nighttime use better for casual time use. Um, this list is showing a heavy representation of the note of Oud in the designer game, which shows you the strength of the note in the designer game, in my opinion. I guess my love for that darker note, even if it's not the best representation of the note in all these Oud-based scents, um, it really just makes an interesting combo to the designer lineups. Here, Armani, I think killed it. I totally ignored this line of Armani, but this one right here opened up my eyes and I'm ready to purchase some more from that lineup. At number four from the house of Tom Ford, his second scent in this top 20 already, doing well. This one, bring out the, the hype train because it is a great scent and the hype train is true on this one. Ombre Leather from Tom Ford, a 2018 release. Look at that. Um, this is the best season for this uh, fall and winter. Big notes in this one, leather. Huge, huge, a leather fan. Love it in this one. Amber cardamom is utilized here. It's more of a nighttime scent for me. Um, casual use, and you can dress it up too. Leather's really good when you're, you're dressed up too. So basically, Tom Ford took that Tuscan leather DNA, bottled it in a cheaper price point. Well, you know what? That's a problem for the rest of the fragrance industry when Tom Ford starts doing that. This stuff is beautifully done. Well worth the hype it received on this platform. Kudos. The best leather note in this list by a mile. Beautiful scent. And Tom Ford has taken care of that middle ground price point now from the designers and the, the, the niche world. He's doing very, very well in that middle section. Now, at number three, no stranger to number three. I think this is where he usually slots in for years and years and years and years. It's the 90s, baby. Oh, yeah, this is one of the best in the game. Angel Men, Amen, 1996 release. Best season for this is winter. But when it gets cool, I just can't help myself. Amen is amazing. Of course, big notes, patchouli, vanilla, coffee. More of a nighttime scent, more of a casual wear scent, this one. Uh, previous uh, list, you can take a look at the resume. This one in pure malt has just destroyed this list over the years and are really the steady ones in this list and doing well. The only fragrance that is released in the 90s in this list shows what a polarizing and excellent set Amen really is. The complexity is through the roof. The scent profile has not been matched in the game. One of my favorites of all time. 
Angel Man. Didn't I just talk about Tom Ford destroying this list? Well, yeah, they got the number two slot too. This one right here, polarizing one, but I don't care. It's my list, god darn it. This is Noir Entre Sit, new to the list, 2017 release. Best season for this is winter. Big notes, pepper, ebony. Day or night, more of a nighttime scent. Casual dressed up, casual wear for this one. One could say Tom Ford has dominated this list with the number two, number four, and number 15 respectively. And it just goes to show you how this brand was bound for greatness when he moved on from Gucci and YSL. When Estee Lauder partnered with Tom Ford in 2005, I was skeptical of the future of the brand. However, Estee Lauder made an excellent portfolio of brands including Le Labo by Killian, Frederick Mall, among others, and have done a good job to either continue the status quo of those brands or opening them to new customers. Now to Noir Anthracite shows you that the culture at Tom Ford has not been broken away. They still make their hits, you know, the tobacco venies and the Tuscan leathers of, of the game. But in this case, they made it for the diehard Tom Ford fragrance heads like myself. Something really off the wall, spicy, earthy, very unique scent in the game. And I have no reservations of putting a scent that I absolutely love. And I know the community hates it, but it's my list, and that's the way you should tackle your fragrance journey just like I do. I'm not scared of getting bashed in the comments below because I got this at number two. You can unsubscribe all you want. I guess our tastes don't match up because of this one right here. It is what it is. I'm not gonna change my taste. And at number one, just as polarizing as my number two. Why? Because I like them. I like it, daring, different. Mm. Gucci, <laughs> you've been doing your thing, Gucci Guilty, absolute, new to the list. Yes, 2017 release, great for winter. Big notes in this one, leather, cypress, vetiver, nighttime scent, more for casual use than dressed up. You know, let's get away from this should never be part of the Guilty series because damn, it shouldn't be. But alas, we are in a designer world and hey, they're trying to tie this fragrance to a name that of course, people recognize. I really wish this and the new Oud from the Guilty series would be a different series altogether. Onto the scent, this is a deep, dark, complex, and well done leather with some green and woody tones. Um, as you can see, my bottle has quite a dent into it. I just bought this last year, around this time, actually. Didn't make the list uh, because it made my winter list instead um, because I bought this later into fall. So, um, Gucci Guilty Absolute, number one this year. You know, my top three tells you about my taste. So, um, you know, anybody that's subscribed to me, if you don't like any of these fragrances, stay subscribed. You never know, your taste may change. <laughs> then I'll be your number one source <laughs> for purchasing. But it goes to show you what your reviewer's taste is. And if you don't like these, I love my deep, dark scents like these. Um, they are just beautiful. And yes, I wear them out. People are going, you wear those out? Yeah. Um, in the cool weather, those fragrances just work as magic. Love it. So thank you so much for tuning in to my top 20. The return of the top 20 list, designer fall list. I'd love to hear your take. What are you wearing this fall? Winter is coming up. And uh, I'd love to hear your take on your darker scents that you're wearing this season. And as always, thank you so much for the support. Much appreciated. Hit like if you haven't. Go check out the description. I am on Instagram. I am on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. Go check me out. And I do have a Facebook group called FGN, Fragrance Guru Nation. We got 14,000 members on a Facebook group. So come join us if you haven't already. And as always, I'd, I'd love to hear your take on what you're wearing this fall season. Merci beaucoup. Have a good one.